asses, it's already Christmas. It's not even Halloween yet. Channel Pedwar Kumri S Pedwar Ek or Channel 4 Wales as for C for the rest of us. It started broadcasting on the 1st of November 1982, a day before Channel 4 did in the rest of the UK, after years of protests for a dedicated Welsh television service. The first set of items used by S4C depicted the channel under the complicated Wales for Cymru branding that confused a sheer volume of television viewers who saw it at the end of Super Ted. Animation being one of their primary exports in the 80s, believing it was pure Welsh nationalist propaganda, even though I know it wasn't. I mean, a lot of people didn't know what Shannon Pedro Cymru meant in English anyway. The first set of items, depicted by S4C, depicted Welsh scenery in a set of interchangeable items, prefiguring the likes of BBC One and the like 20 years down the line. There are even attempts made by BBC 2W, and even fewer people remember that than S. Pedwarek Digidol, so let's move on, shall we? Christmas signs from this phase are really hard to find, with S4C preferring to rely on actual humans with actual faces and ass to do the announcing tasks. The earliest I can find with any given clarity is this little gem from Christmas 1983, as a little Easter egg that came after close down, so I guess that kind of counts. A few weeks since 1987, S4C rebranded itself for the first time, changing its typeface and adopting the objects flying through space aesthetic that the English Channel 4 had invented and that HTV was already attempting to emulate. I don't have any Christmas items at all from every year, so let's just jump straight to 1988 when S4C stopped relying on InVision announcers. That year's theme consisted of church bells playing nothing because the announcer is speaking over the ident, and that's what the BBC were doing at the time. Well, mostly. It's almost as the computer and tech department of the S4C finished the ident with two minutes left before going to Cardiff Woolworths in a bloody hurry with the designers of that year's ident over on BBC One Wales. In 1989, there were two idents and a noticeably better use of computer-generated wizardry. The first being a wind-up toy consisting of four couples dancing to the tune of nothing and no S4C logo. Though there were jars featuring the logo's colours so as to reinforce the impression that S4C was there, even though you know it wasn't, but it's always there. The other island was a bauble with the S4C logo prints on it. It was only set in motion for promos. In 1991, S4C rebranded yet again, this time featuring a Welsh slate and some water. But as we know at Christmas, all resemblances of the main ident are thrown apart. 1991 gave us recycling of the bells from a few years earlier, but now a lot more polished and featuring a stained drawing from a church. 1992, they just gave us a curtain. Maybe the promos had some sort of pantomime theme to it, a bit like Channel 4 on the other side of the country. A bit like the Seisneg Channel 4. In April 1993, S4C underwent its largest rebrand exercise to date back then. They adopted the dragon as their visual mascot, albeit interpreted by a bunch of inanimate objects breathing fire. Because... dragons. That year's Christmas item featured a poorly designed, spastic CGI dragon trapped inside a snow globe. That I guess represents a Christmas living room? This isn't the first time the Welsh denied them like this. BBC One Wales did the same five years earlier with a snowman reading a newspaper. Or is that a book of carols? Never mind. Two years later, S4C underwent a minor cosmetic change, keeping the idents but changing the logo to be more coherent to the design of the idents. The new logo also featured a tilde dash, supposedly making you believe that C in S4C was a dragon's head, breathing fire. The item package, I said, remained the same, but items came and went, just like BBC Two. 
Again, I don't have examples from every year, so let's just skip straight to the year 2000. That year's Christmas Islands depicted hyper cartoony moons and stars. Somehow this just feels like Christmas 1986 on the Sasnick BBC One. Maybe it's just me. Footage of the 2001 Christmas Island is elusive, but in 2002, what seemed to be it, alongside all the S4C Christmas Islands, appeared on the background of the Christmas promos. That Christmas, Espedarek pulled an 80s Channel 4 trick, meaning that the Ident didn't match the promos. Instead, they got a Holly and Ivy theme with both appearing really close to the screen. In 2003, the Ident's were minimalist in nature. Just a white silhouette of anything themed Christmassy atop S4C's trademark red. That's just going to outsmart a bit of snow on the logo as the Oxford English Dictionary's description of the word perfunctory. You might have noticed the lack of a dragon in the past couple of violins. Maybe they wanted a rebrand. In 2000, Pedwar S. Pedwarek was still doing something rather minimalist, featuring a Christmas tree made out of squares. But then in 2000, Pimp, they sort of pulled out all the stops and came with two sets of violins, the first depicting abstract shapes, as usual, and the second depicting a modern retelling of the nativity, as if it were happening in Cardiff in 2005. Uncertain times for us for C back then, as there were concerns for a potential rebrand and possibly a new name. The new name was aborted, and by the end of 2000, Huech, the dragons were almost no more, being replaced by temporary items featuring television sets. The literally inevitable redesign started with a Christmas island with television sets arranged in a way that looks like a Christmas tree, showing pictures of a Christmas tree. The dragons had had their vendetta during the first two weeks of January, but they were increasingly little seen. And then on the 18th of January, everything changed. S4C had dropped the dragons for good, and with it, they ended a set of items that ran for nearly 14 years. The longest running uninterrupted set of items on British television, having, with BBC4 having beaten them in 2019. A new slim logo and a new live action look were now the order of the day. Turns out we've got full circle after 25 years. Back to basics. That Christmas, don't know if this counts, they got these dots generating shapes. Christmas equivalent of the flowing lines. Don't know when this package of Christmas silence was from, maybe 2008 or 2009, they depicted objects appearing one by one, standing out from a pretty dull and white environment. 2010's theme appears to be Christmas trees appearing in what seems to be a castle. 2011 saw the return of the nativity, we've covered that last time in 2005, this time featuring elements related to a traditional nativity and the start of Bethlehem appearing. Then in 2012, the items play with the notion of neon lights, something that makes BBC One's items at any time of the year feel like an Ethiopian channel compared to S4C. For 2013, S4C decided to choose a robin as its Christmassy mascot, flying over snowscapes that don't even look like whales. At last, truly secular Christmas items, the Radio Times have done that with their covers for Christmas over the past 40 years. Hopefully S4C won't self-describe their items as legendary in the near future. In April 2014, S4C unveiled a new look, adopting the logo they still use today, placing the refreshed word mark inside a trapezoid. Trapezoid not included in the items. Yet the items were more about faces rather than dragons. That Christmas, they just readapted last year's Robin package with new animations and with new animation so that they were now able to fit in with the new template. Although later items were now closer to the main package. Take a look at 2015. Has S4C gone all BBC One at Christmas? Don't get me wrong, but these items fall under a category similar to that of BBC One. What of all the live action and lack of integrated symbol, but a theme that all the items shared and it's dull. This isn't the BBC. This isn't even Harlech. I suggest you should write Cumminet about that. Sam, that is Gazy Arkham, 
Sorry then. And Kylo, ooh, 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 that's enough for a match in the bear. That's in 2016, they were doing more or less the same, but this time with Santa Claus. Really? In 2017, they seem to have learned from their flaws and adopted a whole new Christmas island featuring a Santa's factory theme without Santa. That year, the whole country had the worst Christmas islands of all time. S4C had beaten the rest to the punch. They repeated the set in 2018, and at the time of recording, here in Portugal are already getting the first Christmas adverts. <sighs> so, we don't know if S4C is going to repeat the islands for the third time in a row, or adopt a new set of islands, otherwise I'll be getting flashbacks of BBC Two ten years ago. All this Christmas before Halloween just makes me feel ill. As Weeble would say, Christmas is so commercialized. It makes me sick. Oh well. Not only Cloud and everyone.